Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are already on Friday. It's Friday, November 22nd. And today, we're going to hear again from still from St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 45 to 48. Now, this is interesting. Interesting. Okay. Good morning, Josefina. <laughs> Josefina's on the call, on the podcast. Okay. So, let's read. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death. But they could find no way to accomplish their purpose because all the people were hanging on his words. You know what happened here, right? Jesus, Jesus did not just say, hey, get out of this place, get out of the way, you, you thieves, you've made my uh, house, the house of my father, a den of thieves. No, Jesus fashioned a whip okay? at least that's how it's being described in another gospel right with a whip of cords our Lord lashed on these people and drove them out physically sometimes you can imagine Ooh, our Lord was violent right our Lord was violent at least in this particular instance and why was that because in another, in another um, passage, he was just repeating what I think it was Isaiah who said that. The zeal for thy house consumes me. Zeal for thy house consumes me. You know what? There are modern day temple thieves. <clears throat> and sometimes we're all guilty of being the modern day temple thieves. We turn the house of God, maybe not into a place of business, but a place that it shouldn't be. And therefore, we're also stealing. What do I mean by that? You know, it's funny how we turn the church of God into a place of socialization. Sometimes we turn it into a karaoke bar. Sometimes we turn it into a concert hall. Sometimes we turn it into a dance hall. Sometimes we turn it into a, a stage for, uh, for uh, stand-up comics. Sometimes we turn it into a political forum. How so, you may ask? Well... We turn it into a uh, socialization uh, 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 um, if, if we could not respect people who are praying silently at church and we go chatter and chit chat, chit chat, chit chat in the full hearing of people who are trying to be recollected and, and, and prayerful inside the church. We turn it into a karaoke bar. When you have star singers in your choir who, uh, uh, who, who, who uh, stand out too much and instead of uh, facilitating worship, they attract attention to themselves. Or worse, priests, right? Who don't know if they are priests, ministers, or entertainers who sometimes stand up in front of the altar with a guitar or their microphone and singing a pop song for the appreciation of his audience. Or sometimes we turn it into a concert hall where, again, choirs uh, uh, do what is liturgically not permissible inside the church. Or worse, sometimes a dance hall. Or a comedy shop where homilies of priests are full of jokes without substance. Or sometimes a political forum 
or sometimes a non-profit uh, forum where we, we just keep soliciting all sorts of funds and help for all sorts of causes. In effect, disturbing the sublimity of what we have in the church of God. And why is that thievery? Why is that stealing? Because people who do those things steal from Jesus Christ the attention that is meant for His own glory and honor. We don't know how to honor the presence of Jesus Christ in the tabernacle when we do those things. We insult the presence of Jesus Christ when we convert His altar and His church into an entertainment bar instead of a place of worship. We ought to be driven out of that church. Because just like those thieves that Jesus drove out, we too are turning the house of God into a den of thieves. Because we steal the attention for ourselves instead of according it, giving it all to Jesus Christ who sits and stays at the tabernacle waiting for our expressions of gratitude, expressions of worship and adoration. Plenty of us are guilty of being thieves. It is worth looking into our behavior at church. Let us restore to the church the dignity that it deserves. It is the house of God. It is the house of prayer. It is the house of solace for people who are looking for consolation. Come to me, those who are burdened, and I will give you rest. You rest here in the tabernacle. You rest here in front of me. It is a place where, like Mary, the sister Martha, found a source of, of, of uh, consolation when she sat by the foot of Jesus instead of being busy like her sister Martha with entertainment. Mary has chosen the better part. We who pray at church are being like Mary who have chosen the better part to listen at the foot of Jesus. Now those of us who cannot respect the atmosphere of prayer and contemplation and recollection at church are being thieves. We are not only stealing from Jesus the, the, uh, the um, attention that he deserves, but we're also stealing from our co-parishioners or other faithful the opportunity to be recollected in prayer. So we got to put a stop to all of these foolishness, to all of these foolish behaviors that we exhibit at church. And we have to be going to church and entering that sanctuary with dignity, with devotion, with piety, with respect for others, but with full adoration given to Jesus Christ. We have to promote an atmosphere of prayer and we better do away with all the foolishness that the choir does or priests do at the altar or those of us who can't keep our mouths shut. Why can't you wait until you get out of the plaza or in the streets? Yes, Eva. <laughs> to do your chatter and talking and greeting. There's no place in the church for all of that. You're being disrespectful of the Blessed Sacrament and disrespectful of other people who are praying at church. We have to learn to get rid of these very bad behaviors and restore the dignity that is reserved for God alone at the tabernacle at our churches. The other thing I'd like us to understand is that 
These churches need to be open. They need to be open during the day because Jesus is in the tabernacle for a purpose. He wanted to remain with us. He wanted to welcome us. He wanted us to be with Him in prayer. He wanted us to spend time to visit Him, console Him for all these years, 2,000 years that He has waited for us. He wants us to come to Him and pray to Him. He wants us to bring our burdens to Him. Why are we closing that church? And I'm addressing myself particularly my own parish, St. Joseph's. Open that church because it is wrong. It is theologically, doctrinally, and ascetically wrong to be closing the doors of that church all throughout the day. And if your reason is fear, then you have no faith. The reason they give in St. Joseph's Church is because of security, security, security. It's a false excuse, especially in this day and age. When, oh my gosh, we got so many ways by which we can secure that church and the sanctuary of the church. We're not using our heads. It's as simple as that. We're not using our heads. And we are giving excuses to close down that church and prevent people from the access that they should have, that they right, have the right to have, by the way, of the Blessed Sacrament. And you people who close your churches are depriving the faithful of that right. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves if we give all of these kinds of excuses. Let us be ashamed of ourselves. Okay, I didn't mean to get mad. I'm smiling, I'm not mad. I'm just emphatic because something ought to be done about these things. We ought to do, to behave better at church and open up that church. Those of you who are listening to this broadcast this morning, you, you have to talk to, to, uh, to your to your pastors, you have to talk to those who administer your churches to open up that church and to be stricter in implementing certain policies and rules of better behavior at church in order to restore the dignity that is owed to God and the respect that we should be giving our fellow Christians who are praying at church and using the church for its purpose. Let us not be modern day thieves because we would incur the wrath of Jesus Christ who violently pushed out people, drove them out of the church because we too are turning the house of God into a den of thieves. You don't want to be guilty about that, do you? Okay. That's it for us. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good weekend ahead of you. It's getting cold here in Modesto. So wrap up. Keep warm. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.